Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can easily add immersive audio to your scenes using volumetric audio. So here we have an example scene. It's just an FBX I made earlier with a bunch of meshes inside of different elements that may be present in your scene. We also have some lights and a main camera that has a free flight script attached to it. Uh, and all of this is included in the volumetric audio package. So let's go ahead and take a look at our force field here. Let's select the force field mesh. You'll see I've attached a mesh collider to this. This allows the player or something to collide against it. But also, if we go to Component, Volumetric Audio, and then add the mesh component, you'll see it automatically copies the settings across from the mesh collider. So if you didn't have a mesh collider or a mesh filter attached, then you would just have to set the mesh field yourself and make sure it looks correct in the editor by examining the red lines that appear here. So if I were to disable this, you'd see the red lines disappear. So the red lines here uh, denote what volumetric audio is seeing. So now that we've set up our mesh here for the force field, let's go ahead and add our sound. If in the sounds directory, I've included some uh, seamless sound loops. So let's go ahead and select the force field loop and add that into our scene. Now let's make sure we check the loop setting and go to component volumetric audio and then add the audio source component. This will link this audio source to the shape. So to do that, we just have to specify which shape this sound uh, should be attached to. So we attached the, the um, shape to the force field game object here. So let's go back to our sound and just drag the force field game object into the field marked in red. And you'll see the shape uh, component has been copied across. So that's pretty much it. Let's just hit play. And now if we move the camera toward the force field, you can hear that there's a nice buzzing force field sound. And if we go uh, on it from side on, you can hear that the sound is coming from the right side and from the left side. So it's fully 3D. And we can move anywhere along the mesh and hear sound as you would expect from a fully volumetric surface. So now we can move to like the uh, top corner and you still hear sound coming from the surface. Move to this corner, you can still hear sound coming from the surface. So of course, if you wanted to do this using Unity out of the box, you could just place a sound in the center, and a s in the center here, and in the center of all of these uh, force field panels, but it still wouldn't uh, be very, uh, very authentic or realistic, because if the sound was just in the center, it would sound like it's coming from this direction. It wouldn't sound very immersive at all. And additionally, if you wanted to add more force field panels, then you would have to duplicate the sound some more and it would be very tedious. But with volumetric audio, it automatically reads uh, any mesh updates you do. So example, if I added some more uh, force field panels over here, without touching anything, it would automatically work. So it definitely saves a lot of time if you have a scene set up, something like this. So let's go back to the editor and let's select our water mesh now. Let's the same thing again. Let's go to components, volumetric audio and add the mesh component. Now in this case we could add the path component because the river mesh itself is basically a windy path. But I will show you how to use the path component later. But for simplicity's sake we'll just use the mesh component here. Uh, same thing again. Let's find our sound. In this case we want the water loop. Let's drag that in. Let's make sure we mark it as looping. And then let's go to component, volumetric audio, and then add the audio source component. It wants a shape, so let's drag and drop the water into there. So now, if we just hit play, and then move the camera toward the water surface, you can hear a nice uh, looping water sound. And this follows us throughout the whole mesh. And if we ever move away from the mesh, you can hear it fades away in the distance. And it appears again on this mesh. So it's fully volumetric as you might expect and again uh, you only have to set the sound up once you don't have to place a hundred sounds along this whole path like you traditionally would have to do uh, so now let's uh, go ahead and set up the power lines we have a power line one and power line two for the left and right let's select them both let's go to component volumetric audio and then add the VA mesh component again you can use a path but uh, mesh is much easier so Let's uh, drag in two power line sounds this time because we want it to come from the left and the right side uh, simultaneously. So let's select both these. Go to component, add the audio source component. Now let's select these individually and let's just drag the shape in 
so the first power uh, the power line loop sound has power line one as the shape, and this has power line two as the shape. And uh, additionally, I want to uh, decrease the sound range. So let's change this from the default of min distance of one. Let's change it to a min distance of 0.4. Now, if we hit play, wait, 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 I forgot to check looping. Check looping, and then let's hit play. So now, if I move the camera toward the power line, you can hear the buzzing sound comes from both sides and it follows us along the whole path. So can, if you imagine trying to set this kind of thing up using Unity out of the box, you would have to place hundreds of sounds along the whole surface. And if you ever wanted to adjust how slack these wires are, then suddenly you would find you would have to reposition everything uh, to keep it immersive. So this is very handy for this kind of scene. So now I'll show you how to use a path. If we go ahead and look at our sewer pipe here, You'll see the mesh is quite complex. Maybe in your game your sewer pipe is several thousand triangles, in which case using the VA mesh component may not make sense because it has some overhead. So if your shape can be defined by a path such as this pipe, then it makes sense to just go to component, volumetric audio, and then add the VA path component. Now once you add the path, you'll see the uh, points uh, array here is marked in red. That's because we need to set how many points we want. Let's begin with two points, and once we add two points, you'll see that in the scene view, we have a new uh, gizmo. You see here we have the normal move gizmo, which is the uh, which are the really big arrows here, and inside that we have some small arrows. These are used to move the points. So if we move this one, you see I moved point one, and here we have point zero. So to set up this kind of pipe, let's leave point uh, point zero at the start of the pipe, and let's move point one to the end. To add the, and you see we need an additional two points, one here and one here. To easily do that, let's click the plus button here to split the existing line. So now we add an additional point in the middle. Let's set that up so it's there, and let's split this path here. So now in total we have four points, zero, two, three. And uh, if you want to fine tune any of the numbers, then you can adjust them here in the inspector. So now let's go ahead and uh, add our sound for the pipe, which is pipe loop. Let's check the loop setting and let's go to components, volumetric audio, add the audio source component. And then let's drag the pipe uh, game object into the shape field so it shape copies the shape component. Now if we hit play, we can move the camera near the pipe and we can hear a nice looping sewage sound and it follows the whole pipe, so no matter where we go, it sounds like it's coming from there, and it's very immersive, easy to set up, and we can also tweak the path very easily. Uh, so now, let's move on to some interesting stuff, like the propeller. Let's begin by selecting the propeller blades, and let's add, uh, like we have done before, let's add the mesh component here. Again, everything's been filled in. Uh, if you're wondering what the is hollow setting does, that allows you to change uh, how the sound is treated when you enter the, the mesh. In this case, if we wanted a sound to come from inside the propeller blade itself, then we would uncheck this, and when the camera enters it, it would s we would suddenly be surrounded by sound. If you leave it as is hollow, then sound would only appear to come from the skin or the uh, surface of the mesh. So. For example, the river is paper thin, as you can see, and the same with the force field here, it's paper thin. So there's clearly no volume to the actual mesh. So leaving that uh, checked with is hollow makes sense. But for the propeller blades, maybe if you want the camera to enter inside, then you would uncheck this value. And the sound would be completely immersive when you enter inside the propeller blades. But in this case, it doesn't really matter which one we choose. Uh, just one word of caution, if you uncheck this and you have a volumetric mesh, the mesh itself cannot have any holes. For example, a uh, if you had a cube, a standard Unity cube has six sides, that would be a, uh, a solid mesh with no holes. But if you were to delete one of the sides, uh, giving you a five-sided cube, then suddenly you would have a hole in the mesh. So in that instance, it wouldn't work fine, it wouldn't work, or at least it wouldn't work as expected. Uh, but you can use meshes with holes as long as uh, they are 
uh, how do I explain it? Like a torus is a shape with a hole inside it, but the shape itself is complete. There's no holes in the actual geometry. So you could uncheck the is hollow value if this mesh was a torus or something similar to, to that or a teapot or a house or a spaceship or something. You could probably uncheck is hollow and it would work exactly as you, as you would expect. So you could enter into the spaceship and you would hear, I don't know, like a humming sound or a com computer sound uh, surrounding you. So yeah, let's just uh, leave is hollow checked for now and let's add a propeller loop sound to our scene and let's check looping, let's go to component, volumetric audio and then add the audio source component. The uh, shape is on the propeller game object so let's drag that in and let's hit play. So now if we move towards the propeller blades You can hear there's a very satisfying whoosh sound as it goes past the camera. And you'll also notice that there is a Doppler effect. So when the when one of the propeller blades approaches the camera, the pitch increases, and as it goes away from the camera, the pitch decreases, just like a siren would on an ambulance or police car as it's moving nearer you or away from you. So that's uh, very good. And again, this is all automatic updated so if you added more blades to this propeller without touching anything it would automatically work if you increase the length of the blades then it would also work exactly as you might expect so it's uh, really handy in that respect so um finally I'm going to show you a compound object here we have a tunnel that has holes in it as you can see we can see uh, the back faces of the triangles which is a easy way to tell if there's holes in the mesh is or not so because we can see the back faces, uh, that means we can't use, we can't uncheck the is hollow value for this mesh. So uh, how would we set this up to have volumetric sound? Well, you can use two um, capsules. You can have a one vertical capsule here and one horizontal capsule, and you could apply a sound to each of them. So you have two sounds. But the problem if you did that is the sound would get louder as you approached both of the volumes. The same is true for using a standard Unity audio source. If you place one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, then the volume would increase and decrease as you move between each of the audio sources, which uh, probably isn't what you want. So in this case, what you want to do is select this and then add some uh, add a game object as a child of the sewer game object. Let's call this uh, volume one, and let's uh, let's just position this at the center for now and let's move the game object to the top of the sewer and let's add a shape let's add a capsule shape for this you could probably get away with using a uh, box shape as well but a capsule seems to fit this better so let's go to component volumetric audio and then add the capsule shape you'll see here in the scene view we have a uh, nice gizmo that shows you what it looks like we, again we want to increase this, the uh, radius here and um, change the height and now it's protruding from the sewer too much so let's move it down here so that's about right now let's uh, go ahead and duplicate this let's call this uh, one volume two let's change the axis on which the sound is uh, uh, projecting across and let's move it uh, to the horizontal part of the sewer let's increase the height value here and uh, so now we have two volumes. If we select them both, you can see we have two volumes. So if you want to combine these into one single compound volume, then what you do is you add a sound. First, let's just use the wind loop for this. Uh, let's set it to looping, and then let's go to component, volumetric audio, and then add the audio source component. You'll notice we have a compound field here. If we check that, then suddenly you see we have a shapes array. So if we drag in volume one, and then drag in volume two. You'll see we have uh, three in there. We have uh, volume one and volume two as our compound shapes. Uh, so now, if we move the camera anywhere inside the sewer, we will hear one uh, one unified sound. It won't get uh, louder as we approach the intersection between them or anything. So it'll work uh, very nicely. But you'll also notice that a uh, warning has appeared here. The audio source contains volumetric shapes. 
uh, so you should alter the pan level based on proximity. Now if you're not aware the pan level is a setting here for 3D sounds. Uh, the setting goes between 0 and 1. This basically tells Unity how 3D you want the sound to sound. So if it's at the 0 that means the sound is completely mono which means all of your speakers will be outputting the sound as if it's completely surrounding you and if you set it to 1 it will be fully directional so the sound will depend on the camera's angle relative to the sound. So in this case we want the sound to be 3D when we're outside of the the uh, sewer and when we enter the sewer we want to be immersed in the sewer sound. So that means when we enter it we want the sound, the uh, pan level to go to 0 or we want the sound to turn to mono. To do that we just enable the pan level setting here and we have the minimum, minimum and maximum values here. So this means when the distance is 0, the, dis the distance to the volume is 0, the pan level will be set to 0 and when the the camera distance to the volume is maximum the pan level will be set to 1 and if you want finer control over the um, the curve of how the pan level changes based on distance then you can edit that here but uh, we probably won't need to worry about that so now that we've enabled that setting let's hit play and let's move the camera toward this you can now hear we have a 3D wind sound that's coming from this uh, opening in the sewer and if we enter into the sewer suddenly you can hear that we're immersed by sound and there's no clear direction where it's coming from. So that's exactly what we want and if we exit the volume you can hear it's now to the left and as we move farther and farther away you can't hear anything. So this is completely volumetric audio here. Now let's add this volumetric audio to the um, propeller blades here. So let's just um, select one of these volumes. Let's select the horizontal volume here. Let's just duplicate that. And let's attach it to our turbine game object and let's move this into position. Let's see, uh, around here. And we need to increase the radius a bit more. Uh, we want the sound to be positioned here and let's increase the height some more and and again we want this to be fully volumetric so we don't want to check the is hollow value if we check the is hollow value then the sound would only emanate from the surface of the capsule so if we entered the center of the capsule we wouldn't hear sound or at least it would be very faint coming from the edges so we want to check uh, uncheck is hollow so it's a volumetric sound uh, let's add another wind sound to our scene Let's make sure we check the looping setting. Let's go to components, volumetric audio, and then add the audio source component. We need to set the shape. So let's uh, set the volume two we added to the turbine. Let's drag that in. And again, we have the warning. We need to enable the pan level setting here. So now if we hit play, and we move the camera within the range of the turbine blades, you can hear we're surrounded by wind. And that's true if we get closer to the blades, farther away, and it still combines with the nice whooshing sound. We can go behind the blades, or basically anywhere within the capsule volume we defined. And uh, another note, uh, all of these features are fully dynamic, so if you had a script that altered the size of the capsule, for example, it would work exactly as you might expect. And uh, if you tweaked the mesh, uh, if you modified the mesh, for example the river, if it was a, a winding river that modified in real time then the sound would follow the modifications. Uh, in fact I have a demo scene that comes with a volumetric audio that shows that. Here we have the dynamic mesh scene. As you can see here we have a spiral mesh here that uh, changes settings. The angle step here changes based on time like this. So if we hit play you can hear the sound. you can hear it whooshing past the camera and this is a fully fully dynamic mesh so all of the vertices on this mesh are modified using a script so if you had a setup like this then and you wanted to apply audio to your uh, mesh then this is really really handy uh, so yeah this is uh, these are all of the core features of volumetric audio and uh, I hope this was 
interesting and uh, if it's if it's uh, looks like something you can use in your project then I, I hope you become a customer and if you have any further questions then feel free to reply to this video or ask a question on the official forum thread. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.